<laughs> I don't know how to start this conversation. Um, I'm here with David Goldstein, who is going to be retiring. Taking a break. He's going to be taking a break. <laughs> But I have not taken a break from him in 34 years. We started together in 1989. We before started the, the, before the prime time premiere. Right Re before KCAL 9 News actually started. KHJ. We both uh, we both started at KHJ wow. uh, in the fall of 89. Mm -hmm. uh, we went on the air March of 90. Correct. Right. So remember, but we had those two hours on KHJ, remember? Right, With Jerry right. Dumphy and yes, I yes. think David Jackson. So we have, we're going to say 89 because that's, yeah. that's when we met each other. Definitely. David, did you come out here specifically, I'm trying to remember, to work for KCAL? Or? I came out here without a job. <laughs> uh, my wife, uh, Dorothy Lucy, uh, Dorothy. came out to be the lifestyle reporter at KCBS from wow. New York. We both moved out from New York. We both wanted to moved to Los Angeles. She got a job. I said, well, okay, let's go and we'll figure it out. And a few months later, I, I did get hired. So uh, it's been a long road. And, and No question <laughs> about that. But I know like, with, with KCAL, you were an OG like me. Mm -hmm. We helped start KCAL. Right, right. So let's, let's start there then, David. Let's um, talk about, it was a very different Los Angeles. Yeah, it was a really different Los Angeles. It was before the the riots. It was the Daryl Gates Police Department. Then I covered the police and the the law, law beat the first few years. Okay, I'm going to back up a little bit. So you were the law beat professor. I mean, uh, reporter. <laughs> Professor, if you will, before you, you start doing investigations. Yeah, before I did investigations, I was general assignment reporter, mm -hmm. but I covered the police department. I covered a lot of the trials. I covered the Rodney King trial, oh. both Rodney King trials I covered. Uh, OJ trial, OJ, uh, that uh, <laughs> case for three years, every single day. It was the only story in my entire career that you did the same story every day because there was so much interest in that prior to the trial and then both trials. Yeah, 24 hours a day, it seemed right, like. Right, and we, we carried uh, KCAL. We did. We, we carried the trial, Except the first trial. Except for the trial. 9 o'clock hour. Remember, we didn't talk about OJ during the 9 right, o'clock right, hour. Right, the 9 o'clock hour was, our was the national. national political international news. Right. But you know what? The two of us, I mean, we, came, we became friends from the beginning and co-workers, but that story in particular was something that we had a lot to do with. We worked in Tangent, the O.J. story. Right. I can remember interviewing one of the first jurors to be dismissed. She was dismissed in the middle of the trial it, it was, because of a medical reason, I believe. That's what she said. Right. But it was such a big deal. Do you remember when, when they had the choppers flying overhead and sure. every network in the country was, was here? But David was in my ear, if I can remember. I was asking her questions, and as she started talking, it just became more explosive, and we said, oh, wait a minute, what did she just say? Right. What is she? And for you in particular, I believe it was about the jurors talking to one another, and they were supposed to be sequestered. Exactly. So take it they were there. They were sequestered, but they weren't supposed to talk about the trial uh, after, after hours. She, you got the interview with her uh, that everyone was trying to get. You got that interview with her, and then I believe after she did the on-air interview and then she was talking about other things to both of us and talking about how jurors were talking about the case and many had already made their mind up and things like that, things that jurors are not supposed to do. Which really just took the, what, the lid off the can at that point sure. about what had been happening. But you did a major investigation. We reported the, all that yeah. and uh, because of that, uh, I got subpoenaed mm -hmm. uh, the trial, and she got subpoenaed, and uh, Judge Lance Ito heard from both of us and determined, uh, probably because he wanted to keep this trial going, that there would not be a mistrial, even though she said those things. I believe she may have denied some of those things. I've forgotten, but uh, the trial went ahead, obviously. But that was a major portion of the trial, and, and no everybody was riveted across the country with what was going on in that case. And I'm, I'm still going to give you some credit in terms of the criminal uh, 
court system, the criminal justice system, because they did try to make, you put a spotlight on them as well. And sure. um, I'm not even sure if they knew what was going on, but they tried to, to really put a lid going further in terms of what what juries are supposed to do and not supposed to do, especially those that are sequestered. Right, so, and uh, that, was a, that was a big deal at the time. Yeah, there's in, no question that about case. that. And I don't know if people remember, uh, David, maybe some people do, but back in the late uh, 80s, early 90s, we had a very different legal system. The police department was just totally nothing like we see today. No, no. And you, that was your, you well, champion. I, well, I, I was part of it, but I mean, I remember chasing Daryl Gates down the hallway <laughs> at Parker Center every I single day, and I, I was one of many reporters there <laughs> who did that. And he would he would love it. He would come out of his office and hold court for 15 minutes while his press people were saying, "Oh no, 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 no don't, don't, <laughs> don't say <laughs> that." <laughs> and but that was a riveting time, and it changed Los Angeles mm -hmm. uh, when 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 Gates was uh, was replaced. Uh, with Mayor Reardon coming in, and, and it sort of, uh, and we had the riots, we had the... Uh, Which really, that was his demise, remember? Yeah, because, because he first, was fundraising. We're talking about 92. Yeah. And the city was burning, and we couldn't find Chief Gates. Right, and he was, uh, he was uh, at a fundraiser, And I LAPD believe. had not dispersed. Right. Across the city, right, right. right. It was it was a different time. Yeah, it really was. Same traffic, but different time. I was about to say, <laughs> don't you think traffic is much worse now? <laughs> now people are watching us here, and people have seen us on TV for 34 years, but they don't know <laughs> our friendship. Well, that's the thing. And, and goes beyond television. Uh, Pat was at our wedding. Mm. Pat. Um, <laughs> it was so beautiful. I'm going to start crying here. Oh, but, uh, David, oh my God. <laughs> We're going to do this now. It was um, just beautiful. Yeah. Um, um, got the rocking chair for our son, Nash, when he was Nash, born, he was which born. we still have. Which is amazing to um, me. That's for the He's grand. grown up That's with you over at the house yeah. all the time. Yeah. Even when you see him now, he's, Pat, how you doing? I know, and I can't believe how, how grown he's up. He's 25 now. How grown up he is. But... We but we start. have, uh, you know, we we were have been friends for all these years. We have gone out many times <laughs> after work. Uh, Pat and my wife Dorothy are best of friends, yes. and they hang out together. <laughs> and it's it's part of a our TV family. You know, everybody uses that term, and I don't know how much Loosely. we mean it, but. I mean, well, you are we my are work family. brother. Yes, and my sister. I've said that, and I, again, I still can't believe that it's been 34 years that we have seen each other. And for people out there watching, it's a different situation. Um, you know, we, we spend more time at work some, than we do our family sometimes. Yeah. And that's just the way the business has been. Right. So I just... Um, and at the most vulnerable times, exactly. too, that we spent. Oh. When there's big stories, when there's uh, catastrophes going on in Los Angeles or fires and floods and things like and that. And earthquakes. And earthquakes. And we've been around and we spend all, that time, David. Right. And I just appreciate talking to you because I know sometimes I probably looked at you and... Um, said, David, I don't know what's going on, man. I don't know how we're going to get through this. This is just troubling and things that uh, we've never experienced before. Right. And you always had that reassuring, like, you got it. We're going to get through this. And we have. Yeah. And goodness knows that we've seen so many things. Um, we're talking about the first riots, and well, in 1992, the earthquake in 94. Right. Which North really earthquake, yeah. affected you and Dorothy and your family yeah because yeah. of where you live right right we it was right after our wedding yeah and we had a lot of China and things like that in the cabinets and the cabinets came crashing down and broke all a lot of our wedding gifts I never forget that yeah and everybody else in town too so but, well, yeah um, it's not like we weren't uh, just affected but it's just the fact that we can when we came to work that's what we talked about right we always want to make sure that everybody else was doing okay yeah but I remember talking about that in particular Fires, um, as you mentioned, floods, so many things that we've covered. Um, the second in, oh, I want to bring up something. There were times when I was afraid for you, and I know that our viewers feel the same way. In fact, one in particular wanted me to ask you a question 
about some of the investigations that you have done, you really go there. We have seen you go after people that should have been gone after, but there were times where I said, oh gosh, I hope that guy doesn't turn around and, and clock David, <laughs> or I hope he doesn't. But you continue. Yeah. Where did that come from? Where does it come from? I you don't still know do because it. I'm not like I'm out bullying people uh, no. that don't deserve it. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, it's one thing, and we were talking about this earlier, is you get this false sense of security being mm -hmm. a reporter and thinking that you're invincible when we know we are not. Right. Um, I always felt in all the investigations that we did and when we go to confront somebody, that we make sure we're out in an area where you think people aren't going to do something stupid. Um, I, people can't tell at home, but I'm six foot four. My <laughs> photographer that I work with for many years, Michael Brandon, is about six three, six yeah. four as well. Yeah. We would have a producer or two out there. So basically we would have four or five people there on our side while we tried to talk to this person. So you always felt that, okay, he or she is not gonna do something stupid. Thankfully, people always ask me, has anything ever happened? Mm -hmm. No, no, it's not. But I will tell you that there were times when we were going to approach someone who we had found out was doing something wrong and we decided to back off uh -huh. and just said, this isn't the right situation, not enough people around, maybe he's got too many friends around with him. So we we always watched our back. And at times we did have a security guard out there, a, a, an armed uh, but that was um, your police officer. That was your intuition. And ladies and gentlemen, I can't remember any time since I've known him where you weren't steady in charge he can get emotional. <laughs> We've had moments, but really, just in terms of making decisions, you've been very straightforward, very trustworthy, and that says a lot about your character. It does. Yeah, I, I try to work on that Tell for you years. Tell me all these accolades, and I know Dorothy <laughs> helped you out with that. <laughs> I'm gonna talk about something that, that scared me, and I've said this to you before. Uh, David went to the Gulf War, was it 91 around yes, that time? Yes, 91, the first, you went, first you were Gulf in War. in Israel, and the first time we saw David um, on the air, he had on a gas mask, and that just scared me to no end. I think I told you that on the air. I was just very frightened for you. Yeah, that was, uh, that was the year when um, uh, Saddam Hussein was putting the Scud missiles uh, in Israel. And we were there, and, and every night you'd hear the missiles going off, and, and yeah. most of the time they wouldn't land anywhere in the area around Israel, but on that night it did. And they gave us, the government gave us all gas masks when we arrived as reporters, yeah. and gave us a, an hour or two of training. Um, and <laughs> Just an hour. Yeah, that. and we went out, I'll tell you one time, and Dorothy never lets me forget this, that we uh, stayed at a hotel and we operated out of the broadcast center, which I think was two or three blocks from the hotel um, in Tel Aviv and in Jerusalem. And one day I forgot my gas mask in my hotel uh... room <laughs> and there were bombings. And I, I told Dorothy afterward, well, I forgot it, but other people had gas masks that we could use there. But I, I, she's so like, well, how do you forget? How do you not bring it with you? And I said, like, well, you're rushing out of your hotel room. We had been there a while, so you sort of forget about it. And again, that false sense of security yep. as a reporter. But we are as vulnerable as anybody else. That's true, but you are so fearless and just um, intrepid mm. and doing what you do best. Is there a favorite story? You know, people want to know. You know, my, my, my favorite stories are the ones that really affected change. And you've got to um, them. Yeah, we did an investigation a number of years ago on pet stores mm -hmm. and how, and we had people in undercover working there and how they, one pet store was over medicating puppies to make them look kind of cute <laughs> um, and how they were handling dogs and cats. And in part because of our investigation, they uh, passed a law in the city of LA, and that's gone uh, statewide as well now, where they don't sell dogs and cats in pet stores. And part of that was based on our investigation. Uh, another investigation we did was on red light cameras. Everybody hated red light oh, cameras. Oh boy, and, yes. And, and everybody, and, and we knew it was 
a money grab by cities. City were making a lot of money and putting very little effort into putting these cameras up. Um, and, and all the city people would say, oh, the cameras make it safer. So we got all the data for every intersection that had red light cameras from a year before the cameras were installed to a year after and found there were actually more accidents, accidents. after they put the cameras up because people saw those signs, red light camera ahead, and the light maybe was just changing, and they would slam on their brakes. Oh. And the person driving behind them would figure, oh, you're going to go through it, I'm going to go through it. And, and there were so was many rear end collisions. Yeah. Because of that, the city of L.A. removed the red light cameras from the street. So it's investigations like that that affected change and really had some laws passed that I'm really proud of. You should be proud. You save people money too, because I'm gonna, on that that same sub subject. You you did a report about the the tickets that you get in the mail, right, right, from those right, cameras, right. and you said, well, nine times out of ten, that's a phishing right, ticket. Right. That's not the real. They, they couldn't identify people, and the law said you had to identify the person on the red light camera by seeing that picture. Yeah. And they obviously have access to someone's driver's license. If that's not the person, they're supposed to dismiss the ticket. But some jurisdictions were going ahead and just sending the ticket out anyway. and asking people. Well, you need to identify who this person is, mm -hmm. and, and you didn't. <laughs> and they were just trying to scare people into paying it or identifying it. You know, I remember, you know, I'm going to joke about this, and I didn't wear purple for this reason, but that story you did, I believe it was on some of those um, characters on Hollywood Boulevard. You interview well, I interviewed Barney. Barney, <laughs> Barney the dinosaur. I will, that was just... To me, that took the cake. But Barney was a witness to a purse snatching. That's what it was. That's what he wasn't doing wrong. He was a character. He right. was a character. And he witness, was a witness. Was and funny. Barney, Barney did an interview with me, and that's the classic picture I have of somebody has of me interviewing Barney with the big microphone. David and his big microphone talking to Barney the dinosaur, who did not. He was not out of character no. or costume. And he wasn't running or anything. He wanted to talk to me. Yeah, but you ran after him. <laughs> I did. A lot I of did. politicians. A lot of politicians. You know, I, I told uh, Karen. Karen Bass, Mayor Bass, uh, when I talked with her a, a month or two ago, that I've interviewed every mayor since Tom Bradley wow. in, in Los Angeles. Um, because you were, we were both here when Tom Bradley was still yes, mayor. Yes, yeah. Yes. Tom Bradley was still mayor yeah. uh, initially when we first got here. And you talked to him. And uh, I've talked to every mayor. Um, not, not a lot of them, well, some of them like me, and some of them didn't. <laughs> Uh, but they all some of them didn't like. Yeah, I think they did. They do to this day. I, I think they did, and I, and I think they all did, and the politicians did. I think they knew um, if I was, you know, walking their way, they knew they had to come up with some answers. Um, but I, I hopefully they all respected what I do and what other journalists do. I'm sure, and there won't be another person like you. That's for sure. I I, I appreciate as well as well as so many viewers here that you held people accountable right people and that's because what every person whatever bills they pay or what they're responsible for we live by the jurisdiction of other people who we're supposed to trust right right and, and some of the stories which I'm known for here are showing government waste and showing public employees not doing their job or the ones with the DWP who are mm. drinking and driving mm -hmm. outrageous yes but I think it, it hit a chord with people because they have to work hard. They know that if, if they're supposed to be at work at 7 and they show up at 7, 10, they're going to get dock pay. Exactly. And we're showing city employees who numerous on times dime. on the taxpayer dime who come in at 7 and leave at 7.45 and go home and get paid for an entire day or just hang out uh, at a breakfast place for two or three or four hours. And I think it hits a chord because we have a lot of hard-working viewers and knowing that a, I'm paying for that with my mm -hmm. tax money, and B, I couldn't get away with that at uh, my, my job. You understand sometimes why you don't get the services that you need because exactly. they're doing something else. Exactly. You know that, that um, you did something totally on your own, that Echo Park Lake uh, story. Right. You actually went out and measured the contaminants in the water. Right. That was very important. Yeah, that was after they moved uh, the homeless people uh, away mm -hmm. from uh, Echo Park Lake. Um, they cleaned up the area and the grass and everything, but nobody ever bothered to test the water. And so we went around and we got water samples, sent it to a lab, and showed 
super high levels of E. coli, and that's in Echo Park Lake where people go out on the, the boats, yeah. and people also fish in, in part of that lake. That is really eye-opening. Uh, yeah, and, and again, it showed what the city should have done, the Department of Sanitation, I believe, should have done, uh, and they didn't, but they did after our story. They put up warning signs telling people not to go in the water, not to fish in the water, um, and th that's when you know you did a good job, when they actually changed and, and uh, are, are really heeding what you showed. I mean, we did a story a few months ago on uh, Metro. Metro and, and uh, all the drug residue in the emergency exits uh, that Metro didn't clean up. And they knew about it. It was their own report that I got a copy of that they never put out. They never showed it to the Metro board. And somebody gave me a copy of it showing the high levels of drugs there. And these are emergency exits. And, you know, Metro's first response to me is, oh, I'm paraphrasing, but nobody ever uses those exits. But they're emergency exits. Right. And God forbid if there is a train crash, that's the exit people are going to go up on, and they have all this drug residue there. And in the era of fentanyl, where we know it only takes exactly not even a thumbnail, that, that it could be fatal. Sure. So that was important. And after that, they did clean it up. Right. And again, you know, that was an initial tip. Who, someone who sent me the report was a worker there who they were supposed to go in those areas to and do they work. Didn't want and to. they didn't want to go in there. Yeah. And they found out about this report. They complained about it. Nothing was done. We aired an investigation. Lo and behold, it's cleaned up in a matter of weeks. And you got it. You know, th these are just, we can go, oh my God, 34 years worth of work. It's just amazing. Tell me what you're going to miss most, David. The people? I'm going to miss you? Oh Although God, I know I'm we're still going to hang out together. Oh, for sure. Uh, yeah. For sure. Um, I, you know, it's hard to tell what you're going to miss until you leave. You know, I mean, it was totally my decision. It was something I was thinking about, and I've talked to management here since January, I believe, um, that I wanted to wind it down and give a break and, and see if something's next. I have no idea. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to miss being in the thick of news. I, I know the next time there's an earthquake or a major fire, uh, you know, where I expect the phone to ring and say, Goldstein, get out there and meet so-and-so. You still that's might not do gonna, it. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? You still might do it, though. That's not going to happen, but... Um, He's I like, guess don't you, call me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you miss the adrenaline flow of it, I guess. And uh, I almost wish you would have gone into politics. Never I too late. I could have worked for you. Never too late. Uh-oh. <laughs> well, I know no, I better no, be no, the no. first one to find out. <laughs> Well, let's just, you know, to, to encapsulate, um, and this is 34 years here. Yeah. You had work before then, so. I did, yeah, yeah. So, but, but 34, I mean, I, I never thought that I would be at one TV station. That was my other question. For 34 did years. did you think that when we first started that? No, you'd be no, you never, never did. And people who don't know the beginning here, KHJ was a, a TV station that put very little money into a newscast. I think they did one hour of news or something. Like two half hours. Or two half hours. And then Disney purchased the, the station mm -hmm. and, and, and had this plan to do three, three hours, hours of prime time prime news. Time. Never done anywhere. Never done in the I remember when we first heard about that, I was like, yeah, right, that, that's not going to happen. And that's what they all said, though. Remember, even the, the newspaper writers said, oh, that won't last. Right, it won't last. And here it is 34 years later. Yeah. It is one of the driving forces of news in this town. Um, that people know to turn to KCAL News, and, and I, I like to think that we're, we're part of that. Um, mm -hmm. Through the Jerry Dunphy uh, years in the beginning, and David Jackson, and all those people that we both worked with. Um, you know, I'm happy to leave a mark of this TV station for everyone else to watch. You really have over a mark years. of excellence, and I really, a hard time, you know, I'm. No, I'm going to wish you the best of luck. Yeah. You're not going to need a whole lot of that. But when I say that it's been an absolute, it's been beyond, it's been beyond a joy because of how much we've shared together. Yeah. And we still share together. I mean, I've, I could talk about things with you that nobody else knows about or have difficulty in uh, expressing. 
myself, mm -hmm. but our families know each other. I know. I mean, we've been so, so close, like brother and sister. Yeah. And um, I'm going to miss you. Um, I'm <laughs> miss you most. <laughs> I love you too. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we'll still be together. <laughs> <laughs> we got to start a show. <laughs> that would be funny. Yeah. Can you imagine? Goldstein and Harvey. Yeah, oh my god. Do gosh. a podcast. Everyone's doing. <laughs> <laughs> You'd go. Everyone's doing a podcast. That's wrong, Pat. They go. Oh, but but David, there's some gray, and you go. No, there isn't. <laughs> Oh, I got your tissue box here. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, I know you're going to look forward you. to, um, you probably do a lot more fun stuff. We're going to travel. You, you like to travel? We're going to do a lot of traveling, and, uh, Dorothy and I, and um, I just have, have some fun and, and not think about work for a while yeah. and um, see what happens, you know? And maybe it's we been can a, a, pull out that little rocker that was Nash's in the attic for... <laughs> Uh, we'll see about that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I love you, man. I love you too. I'm gonna miss you. You too. <laughs> oh boy. All right. That's a wrap. <laughs> <laughs>